Hey everyone, we're back for more AP Statistics practice test, and we're looking at chi-square distributions and how do we use them for inference and hypothesis tests. So let's get started. Um, we're taking a look at some Coca-Cola machines over here. Your school administrator wants to install a new soft drink machine in the gym and in the cafeteria. Their market analysis want to know if flavor preference depends on location. A random sample of 180 students were selected and interviewed. Their location and soft drink preferences are given in the table. So, is there a relationship between soda preference and location? Test the hypothesis at a 5% significance level. So first of all, let's just talk about what kind of test this is going to be. We have one sample. You know, we just did one sample of 180 students, and we're testing two different variables. Namely, we're looking at drink and location. So when you have one sample and you're testing two different variables, not just one variable, two variables from that one sample, you're looking at a chi-square test for association. Now, it doesn't matter what the test you use here for chi-square, they're all implemented exactly the same way. It's just the results of the test or the con conclusion of the test is a little bit different depending on which test you use. So firstly, we're, we, they want us to write down the marginal values in the table and write the expected counts next to the observed counts. So let's go ahead and get that done. I don't think there's a whole lot of room in that table, so I'm just going to write out a new table and just write down. So let's see, Coca-Cola, yeah, we're just writing a new table. Sorry about that. Coca-Cola, we have 33 and 57, so I think that's a total of 90. Put that in there. Uh, Pepsi, we have 20 and 30, so that's a total of 50, yeah. And for Sprite, I can't see that number. Yeah, 35 and 5, that's a total of... 40. So when we add that together, we have a total, we should get 180. Now for the gym, let's see, we've got 33 Coca-Cola and 30 Pepsi. That's 63. 63 and 5, that is 68. And rather than do subtraction, I'm actually going to add together the cafeteria row. So the cafeteria row, we got 57 and 20 that is 77 77 and 30 that is 107 and then 107 plus 5 uh, that's 112. if i did everything correctly that should add up to 180. so i think it worked now we need to get our expected values so let's grab our calculator and you don't need to do this any, you don't have to make this fancy if you don't want to. Um, I'm going to start by doing the Coca-Cola and Jim. So the total for the Coca-Cola row is 90. And the total for the Jim column is 68. And then we're going to divide by the grand total or the table total, which is 180. That gives me a 34. So our expected here is 34. Let's do the same thing for Coca-Cola in the cafeteria. Total for the Coca-Cola row is 90. Total for the cafeteria column is 112. The table total is 180. That gives us an expected value of 56. Naturally, you could have done some subtraction to figure this out. 34, uh, 90 minus 34 is 56. So let's do the rest of this table. Okay, and with 24.9, that has we have all of our expected counts and all of our observed counts, and we're ready to go on to letter B. So letter B, write the null and alternative hypothesis for a chi-square analysis of these data. Now, I really like the, uh, the chi-square test for association because the null and alternative hypotheses are really repetitive. So the null hypothesis is always there is no association between the two variables 
So in this case, there is no association between location and drink preference. The alternative hypothesis is there is an association between location and drink preference. Now, if you were watching the last video, of course, you probably saw that the next thing here is also going to be the same. It is state and verify the conditions. Now, there are only two conditions. Uh, the sample must be a random sample, and all expected counts have to be greater than five. The name of this test is the chi-square test for association. Now, is this a random sample? And I see in the reading here, we have a random sample of 180 students. So I'm going to go ahead and quote that here. And for the next one, it says all expected counts are greater than five. And of course, like we always do for a chi-square test, we're going to refer to the expected table. So make sure you have a table that says expected with all the values in it. And all the values are almost guaranteed to be greater than five. And we're done with letter C. Now, the next one, the test statistic. Uh, I feel like I'm on Groundhog's Day here because we're going to be doing the exact same thing that we did before. We're going to start by putting our general formula, which would be observed minus expected squared over expected. And then we're going to write down the substitutions for every uh, cell in the table. Like starting off with Coca-Cola Gym, that is, let's see, we observed 33 right over here, and we expected 34, so 33 minus 34 squared over 34. And we're going to do the same thing next for Coca-Cola in the cafeteria. We observed 57, and we expected 56, so 57 minus 56. Let's put that in here. 57 minus 56, the whole thing squared, over 56, and we'll just keep on going for the rest of the categories. Okay, now that I have everything written out, I'm going to grab my calculator again, and we're going to do something very similar to what we did last time. We're going to uh, head to our lists and we're going to well I gotta clear these lists these are these still have problem one on them and I'm gonna put the observed into L1 that's 33 57 30 20 5 and 35 then I'm gonna put the expected in list 2 so 34 56, 18.9, 31.1, 15.1, and 24.9. Okay. Once you have the observed and expected in list 1 and list 2, you're going to do the exact same calculator routine that we did before. Namely, you're going to go to list, math, and you're going to do sum. You're going to add together, and I'm going to use the fraction bar this time, the observed, which was in list one, minus the expected, which was in list two, squared, divided by the expected, which is in list two. So we're going to go ahead and put that together. And there's our chi-square test statistic, 28.38. Perfect. Test statistic is 28.38. Now we have to do the p-value. No, I'm wrong. We need to do the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom here is going to be the number of rows minus 1 multiplied by the number of columns minus 1. So 3 minus 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1, or just 2. Now we're going to do the p-value. For every chi-square test, the p-value is always the proportion under the chi-square curve that is greater than your test statistic, 28.38 in this case. Grab your calculator, 
head to the distribution menu, go to the chi-square CDF, the lower is always going to be your test statistic, in our case 28.38, our upper is always going to be the biggest number our calculator can handle, 199 works really nicely, and finally our degree of freedom, I think we said that was 2, and if you know, also kind of a trick here, if you want to, you could just do 3 minus 1 multiplied by 2 minus 1 if you um, are so inclined. Your calculator will do that math for you. And then we're going to go ahead and hit it. Yeah, that's 0. Uh, that's 2.8 times 10 to the negative 6.87 times 10 to the negative 7 power. Would we say 6.87 times 10 to the negative 7 power? And in the world of stats, that's equal to 0. So there's our p-value, which means that uh, we have evidence for the null hypothesis. Uh, and that actually, that should go in letter E. We're supporting the alternative hypothesis. Let's grab the conclusion that's ready made for us. Let's see, our p-value is definitely less than alpha, so our data supports the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis was there is an association between drink preference and location. clean this up a little bit. And there we go. This is all of question two on your practice exam. We'll see you next time when we look at question three on your AP Statistics chapter 11 practice exam. See you guys next time.